Hello and welcome to what is officially the transition episode between what was the Practical Stoic podcast and what is now going to be the Walled Garden podcast. I just wanted to take a moment before we dive into the interview portion or the conversational portion of this episode uh, just to reflect on the past few years of you know, starting the Practical Stoic and kind of how we got here. And uh, I wanted to thank every single one of you who has supported me, whether it's since the beginning in 2017 or whether you've just been listening for a few weeks, it doesn't matter. You know, you've you've dedicated your time, your effort to uh, following along as I've been diving into this philosophy of stoicism and, you know, taking some detours along the way. But, you know, whether you've been listening to the podcast or, you know, supporting me on Patreon or, uh, you know, getting coaching with me or just sending me an email and sharing your thoughts, your feedback um, uh, of the direction that I'm going, uh, it's all been completely life transformational for me. Uh, and I really want to thank you for that because when I think about it, you know, starting the Practical Stoic podcast was one of the most important decisions I made in my life. It was it was certainly one of those things. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I just decided, hey, listen, if I'm going to be learning about this philosophy that's helping me so much, well, I might as well bring some people along on that journey. And I happened to have a few of the skills that I could put them some things together and maybe start thinking and start speaking and and, you know, I, I noticed an immediate, uh, uh, you know, an immediate audience started to gather around listening to this. And what that did for me is it really put me in a position where I had a responsibility to start aiming higher, to start thinking deeper, to start uh, really uh, trying to transform the way that I think and to to try and understand this philosophy in a way that I could communicate that would be effective both for me, because the most important thing is that I'm trying to take this philosophy on in my life, or you know, I'm trying to learn and grow and see what it does for me. And hopefully as I do that, you guys are listening along and doing the same in your own lives, right? Uh, so I just wanted to thank you. You know, this has been uh, quite an important element of my life. And you'll also notice that in the past kind of year and a half, uh, I've been uh, constantly shifting, uh, I guess, in the background, you know, looking for which direction is right to go. Because when I quit my job a year and a half ago and decided to go into the Practical Stoic podcast kind of full time and my coaching and everything like that, I... I wasn't satisfied with just coming back to this and saying, okay, cool, I'm just going to do the podcast, you know, I'm going to do my coaching. And that, I was trying to answer a question. The question that I was trying to answer is what, what is the most important path that I could be walking for myself, you know, and if that involves the podcast, great. If that, you know, it, it was a question of aims. What should I be aiming at? What, you know, what is the right thing for me to be doing? What, what is the direction that I feel pulled towards? I really wanted to know that. And, you know, the podcast was, again, a vehicle for me to uh, express that path that I was on to you guys in a way that could also help you to maybe take some valuable lessons away and use them in your own life. And and what I started noticing was I started to come to know myself a lot more, you know, started to see the different directions that I was being pulled, whether it was, um, you know, writing a book, which, uh, you know, is about to be on pre-order. I'm very excited. Um, so, uh, but we can talk about that when it is on pre-order, uh, you know, whether it was doing more music, which is so important to me, whether, you know, writing poetry, uh, really diving into the coaching and man, being coaching and being coached in return, I... I'm continually surprised by uh, how I regularly feel as though I'm learning more from my clients than they are from me, you know, because it's uh, everybody has a unique life experience. Everybody has their own wisdom that they can share. And if if you can put yourself in a position where you can constantly be sift, uh, kind of searching for that wisdom that other people are projecting to you, uh, man, you can you can grow quickly. You know, you can really start to see a different uh, side of uh, existence, really. Um, and so I'm grateful to the people I've worked with. I'm grateful to the people who have been listening and emailing and, you know, sharing their thoughts and supporting me. And, and so, you know, over the past year and a half, I, I really started to ask that question, what would be the best thing that I could do? You know, not just skating along, but how do I structure this whole thing that I'm trying to do here in such a way that would really be beneficial for me? You know, as the Stoics say, you know, good for me good for my community, good for the world, that sort of thing, You're expanding those circles. And so that's what brings me to the world garden, right? Because I wanted to change the direction of the podcast so that we don't have to specifically focus on just stoicism, you know, because I'm interested in a whole bunch of things. I'm interested in uh, 
poetry and just culture and music and art and philosophy and theology and, uh, you know, Eastern philosophies, Western philosophies. I'm interested in all these things and I want to pull together the wisdom of the world in such a way that we, you know, we don't have to become ideologues about this, but we can simply live by the code of philosophy, which is to love wisdom wherever you find it. And you can find it in so many places. So I wanted to expand that, right, so that I could expand my own intellectual horizons and bring you guys a lot along on that. But one of the other elements to this that I thought was just absolutely crucial, right, is I wanted to surround myself with people who uh, who I genuinely love, right, who, uh, who we could work together to strengthen each other, to, uh, you know, to have that tension of the dialogue where we're trying to put our ideas to the test against each other, where we're trying to... Um, uh, release whatever, you know, beautiful artistic or philosophical or, you know, uh, endeavor that we're trying to bring into the world in a, in, a, in a safe environment where we feel like we all have shared values and sharing them together. And um, anyway, I'm getting off track here, but ultimately I wanted to have mentors and whether they come to me by, um, you know, people I'm about to mention or, um, or even just setting up a community where there's a feedback loop where we get to, uh, you know, discuss these ideas together and strengthen each other as we do. And so, you know, I reached out to Sharon LaBelle and I reached out to Kai Whiting and I said, Hey, you know, went, went to Sharon and I said, Hey, would you like to work with me on something? You know, is there a way that we can collaborate in something? And I had a whole bunch of ideas. I kind of threw them over to her and Sharon in her classic, amazing self, she was just like, great, let's figure this out. You know, so she's an amazing person. You know, Kaya, very much the same. You know, I, I went to him and said, hey, look, we're putting together this thing. Do you think you'd be interested in coming along and getting involved with uh, with us here? And Kai was very much the same, very excited to get on board and to, um, uh, to kind of go in the direction that I'm taking us. And so uh, what I suggested to them is that we're going to start this website called thewalledgarden.com. It's going to be a part of the Walled Garden podcast. Um, and this is going to be our community where we can go and we can think and we can explore ideas. We can push the boundaries of our thinking, right? Whether it is through philosophy or theology or, uh, you know, talking about religion, talking about poetry, art, culture, all of these things, right? We just, we're all filled with this deep sense that, you know, we're in a very important time in history. Uh, and with that comes a certain responsibility for people who are interested in these kinds of questions to, to dig a little bit deeper and to find ways that we can, uh, you know, find common communities with common values to come together and, and, and solve some issues, most importantly for our individual lives, but also that ripples out into society. And so, um, and then I decided to go and uh, bring along uh, 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 Jacob Bush as well. And Jake is, um, you know, a longtime friend of mine. We've been, uh, whether it's been working together or, um, you know, just just having a chat from time to time. He's in the US and, um, you know, he's, he's an amazing person who has uh, such a rich experience and has really come to the kinds of philosophical questions that Sharon and Kai and myself are, are wrestling with as well. But um, in a way through his personal experience in his life, and he's going to be coming on and managing this whole project for us. And, and you'll hear him today in this conversation as well. And so that's what we're doing. You know, uh, Sharon and Kai and Jake and myself, we are, we are setting up this walled garden community. Um, and there's a whole bunch of symbolism behind that, which uh, we talk about in today's episode. Um, and, uh, and we want to encourage you guys to come along on this kind of path with us and, and, and engage in these questions, these philosophical questions that we've been wrestling with for a few years now. Um, but on a, on a, on a bigger scale, you know, and so, um, I wanted to tell you the two main ways that you can kind of get involved over the next few weeks. And then I want to introduce this conversation. Um, so two main ways. So number one, uh, if you'd like to kind of come along and, you know, actually, participate in the formulation of our vision for the walled garden, uh, then every week for the next, I think, six or seven weeks, we are basically getting together. You can actually go and see the events that we've posted there on uh, thewalledgarden.com forward slash events, right? Uh, but if you just go to thewalledgarden.com, you'll be able to find your way around. Uh, so we're going to be having a meetup every single week with Kai, Sharon, Jake, and myself. And we're encouraging you to come along and, uh, you know, we, we want to hear your opinion about what it is that we're doing and we want to get your feedback as well. 
you know, what have you enjoyed about the practical stoic? You know, what kind of questions are you grappling with in your life and how can we serve you better uh, to be able to experience a deeper meaning in life and a deeper purpose? Uh, and so we're going to be doing these meetups every week for the next six or seven weeks. We, we want to encourage you to come along. You can, as I said, go to that link um, and head there. You can register for these events. It's free to everybody. You don't have to be a member of the World Garden yet uh, to join these meetups. So we just want to see you there. Um, so for example, this, this week we're having a, a meetup where uh, I'm going to be discussing everything that I want to contribute to the World Garden. And then the following week we're doing it with Sharon and then with Kai and then with Jake. So we're going to each have a chance to kind of put our own vision forward for the World Garden and what we really want to bring to it. Um, and so, yeah, come along. We'd love to see you. Uh, come and ask questions. Come and give your opinions. We just we want to see you there, right? Um, and the other way that you can get involved is if, if you are keen to join up on the World Garden, just go to theworldgarden.com. You can see our membership options there. You should be able to follow the links and, and find out where you can kind of get on board with the website. Um, and we're really excited about what's in there. Um, and what we're going to be doing is for the first hundred members of the world garden, we've got a discount code. It's practical stoic all in caps, right? So, uh, very simple, practical stoic. And that's if, if you're going to join up with the caretaker membership, I won't go deep into the memberships at the moment, but there's, there's three memberships that we've got at the moment. You can see what they are if you go on the website. But if you join up at the caretaker membership, which gives you access to all of the um, all of the writings and music and poetry and meetups and all this sort of stuff that we're doing on the website, it basically gives you everything you need there. Um, then we're going to give you, I think it's just over 20% off for your membership and, and you don't have to pay at the start. You don't have to start paying after I think a month. Um, and so, yeah, just go over there, check it out, see what you think. But um, if you use that discount code, as I said, practical stoic, that's for the first hundred members uh, joining up on the worldgarden.com. Uh, so those are the two major ways that you can kind of get involved. Um, but as I said, come along to the meetups. We just want to see you guys. We want to hear you. We want to see where you'd like us to take the World Garden uh, podcast as well as the community. Um, and now I get to introduce this this wild conversation. So um, look, we had a few technical mix-ups with the timing and everything of our conversation today, but nonetheless, I hope you really enjoy this because I had so much fun talking with Kai and Sharon and Jake. And what we did today is essentially we we shared our, you know our vision for the world garden. You know what what is it that we're trying to do here? Uh, what kind of tw- questions are we trying to ask? Uh, um, you know, and where do we want this thing to go? So we, we we kind of jump around a bit. I understand that we jump around a lot, but there's a bit of fun in that. Uh, Sharon has to leave a little bit early. That's fine, right? And uh, and Jake is actually driving at the time, so he was only listening to us for most of the conversation. Then he comes in at the very end, and I'd, I'd encourage you to wait till the end and hear what Jake has to say as well, because you've you've heard Sharon and Kai and myself talking all the time, you know, and and um, and I'm sure you're excited to hear more of them because Kai and Sharon are amazing people, right? But uh, it'd be good for you to hear Jake as well, because he comes from the perspective of somebody who actually is really keen for this project because he feels like he really needs it in his life as well, just as as Karen, Karen, Sharon, and uh, Kai and myself feel as well, but. Uh, you know, Jake has a unique perspective on this looking in and thinking, you know, like, hey, I'm really excited about this and here's why. And so he might have a similar perspective to some of you out there with the kind of meaning crisis that we're experiencing in the world today, the kind of purpose crisis. And so, uh, look, I'm excited for you to listen to this conversation. So I'm not going to take up any more time. We're excited. Welcome to the World Garden Podcast. And uh, I'm just really keen for you guys to come along with us on on this new direction of the show. And again, Thank you to everybody who has supported uh, myself on, uh, you know, the practical stoic over the past few years. It's it's been um, really amazing. So so thank you and enjoy this conversation with my new collaborators, uh, Sharon LaBelle, Kai Whiting, and Jacob Bush. Okay, so. Uh, Welcome to the very, very first uh, episode of the World Garden Podcast, uh, the natural evolution of the practical Stoic. Um, And I guess, so what we're going to do in this episode today is uh, I I would hopefully like to start by introducing exactly what the hell it is that we're all doing here. (laughs) So we do have, uh, we do have Sharon LaBelle in the room. Uh, we do have Kai Whiting in the room and we also have Jake Bush. So uh, for those of you who have been listening for a long time to the World Garden podcast, uh, sorry, the the Practical Stoic podcast, 
you'll probably uh, be very aware that I am never too comfortable, uh, always trying to see what the next thing is that I can, you know, push into the picture of what it is that I'm, I'm putting together here um, with, with the podcast. And, and this, this episode represents the next natural evolution as, uh, as Kai and I have talked about before uh, uh, of the practical stoic. Uh, and so I, I would like to introduce maybe Sharon first to share her thoughts on what we're doing here. Um, and I'll, I'll finish off the episode with my thoughts, but Sharon, um, I, I, I guess, welcome to the walled garden project. And, uh, and, and if you want to just share your thoughts about what it is that we're all here for, uh, that would be wonderful. I'm thrilled to be here with all of you. I just have a few words about the spirit of the walled garden. I think of the walled garden as a place where intentional innocence is honored and encouraged. It's a place where true knowledge is respected, but cleverness is left at the door, lest it blind one to revelation. The walled garden is a community of people who want to let out a sigh because at last we've found our people, a group consisting of varying backgrounds, ages, and creeds, but guided by a common reverence for wonder and life's mysteries. The walled garden is friends who have noticed tender or unsung artifacts that they wish to share with others who want to pay attention to and receive them. The walled garden is a virtual space for making and sharing music, art, poetry, insight, and most of all questions about how to live the best possible life. The walled garden is an experimental friendship circle spanning the globe, uniting people of goodwill to uncover ways that virtue might be amplified in society as a whole. The walled garden welcomes the fool, the tentative, the explorer, the trier, the maker, the supposer. The walled garden is a place of connection that fosters inner freedom within each of its members. And I think I'll just stop right here and let other people say their thoughts. Well, I'd, I'd really like to um, maybe just talk a moment about why I've brought you onto this project, Sharon, and, and maybe add to a couple of things that you're saying there and get your response. Because uh, you, Sharon, have been somebody uh, who, since the first moment that I uh, spoke with you, I knew that there was a very important connection between us. And I think I think the first time that really manifested itself to me was when you said that that words are your stock and trade. And that something about that statement just flipped something in my mind and started thinking, wow, you can you can deal with language the 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 you know the english language is your tool of trade and to to see the possibilities that can come from you choosing words carefully and planting them you know hopefully among fertile soil and seeing what comes out of it you know there's there's something so beautiful about that and and i think that we have a kind of um a mutual respect between us. Um, you know, I, I've adored reading your, um, you know, the art of living, your translations of Epictetus's writings, and you, you in return have uh, been somebody who uh, uh, constantly has encouraged me to allow the goods of my soul to rise up to, you know, to where, you know, I'm a, I'm now about to release a book that literally wouldn't be released, Sharon, if it wasn't for your uh, kind kindness and your your careful approach with a young writer you know a young poet is what i would consider myself now 
And so, you know, Sharon, I'm I'm so happy to have you here. And there's there's one other thing that you said recently, well, a few months ago, that I think really speaks to what it is that we're all trying to do here with the World Garden. And for those who are listening, they still have no idea what the hell it is because I haven't even said it. We are, we are starting, um, you know, we're kind of moving from Patreon, where I now put all of my content to the worldgarden.com, which is, uh, which is a new community website where we have a whole bunch of good stuff on offer, which we will get to. But Sharon, you know, a few months ago, you said to me, Simon, how, how can we get people to see what is how can we get people to you know truly engage in life and that question you know alongside kind of my own studies and really starting to develop this <laughs> this deep feeling that there's something extremely important about what it is that we're all doing here <laughs> you know like and there's there's nothing simple there's nothing um there's nothing uh trivial about life and what it is that we're all engaging in here. And it requires a certain amount of seriousness in, in the way that we engage with life. And I think that that in a way is what we're trying to do here is to engage with life seriously uh, and to truly uh, invite people onto that same mission of discovering who one truly is and what one's purpose might be and where one might be led if they were to truly take with grave seriousness the insights that we learn from these ancient teachers and from culture and music and art and all these things. So uh, Sharon, I guess um, I, I just wanted you to, to get your comment on this. You know, I think that part of what we're doing here is, is taking very seriously this journey that all of us in some way have been on of discovering philosophy and wisdom and, 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 and these sorts of things. I, I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to add to that. Well, I think one thing this community can do is help help cure the loneliness some of us feel in our own journeys and also to make us less self-involved because we realize that we're all in this mystery together and we're all afraid, but we're also ready to go. There's, we all have, we've got songs to sing. And I would like, I would like our coming together in all the forms that we do to, to be an inspiration for each person to realize over and over again that their life counts that's it and and what do you do about it you know what what are you for that's not an accusation but hmm. what are we for besides just being bags of meat sucking up oxygen to be crude what are we for yeah that's massive. Yeah. What are we for? That, that It's stepping back and watching humanity from afar and thinking, we're actually up to something here. <laughs> and you watch your own life and you think, yeah, you're actually up to something as well. We're, we're trying to ask these specific yeah. questions and they're important questions. And I guess, Kai, I want to bring you in as well, because um, you know, you're, you're an incredibly important piece to this puzzle of the walled garden. And uh, uh, I've, I've known you for, uh, you know, a few years now and, and had a very similar experience with, with you, Kai, as in um, what you have offered me in your friendship has been uh, so something completely useful and, and, and genuine in my, my, in my opinion, which was you really encouraged me constantly to push myself into the direction of the things that are calling me out, you know, the, 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 the directions that are uh, pulling me forward. And you, you do it in a way that encourages me to, uh, you know, well, let me put it like this. Uh, one of my favorite ideas from Alan Watts is he, he talks about how 
the world can be divided in terms of people. You can divide people into the the prickles and the goo. <laughs> and, uh, and in many ways, I, th- I think Sharon is on the gooey side, right? Uh, the people who kind of <laughs> think that life's a little bit gooey, you know, like uh, they're, they're, they're not necessarily the hardcore academics, but they might be the artists, the mystics, the, the poets, those sorts of people. Um, but th- then he also goes on to say, well, you've got these prickles, the hardcore academics, you know, the hard thinkers, you know, the, the, the dedicated philosophers. And there's always a little bit of tension between the two. But he says quite rightly that life isn't prickles or goos, it's prickly goo and gooey prickles. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, Kai, I think in many ways you have been um, a prickle to me, the, the academic uh, over my shoulder saying, do better, do better, do better. Um, and there's something very important about that. And so, um, you know, I think that bringing you into this project, Kai, was in a way my way of balancing out all the gooiness and saying, let's get some, let's get some academia in here as well and, and bring those two worlds together. So, so, Kai, I want you to talk about, you know, kind of what you're excited about, I guess, with this project and um, give us your thoughts on everything so far. I think I'm the most excited about the fact that it's a garden. It is something that does require the care and artistic license that I don't have. But it's also something that has structure, right? So a garden isn't free for, it isn't a patch of, it isn't a weed patch, or I don't necessarily like using that word, but a patch of ground that has been sporadically cut off. Okay, let's, it's seeded and things have been grown. And, you know, some of that's, great some of that's you know not so great and some of that's just really not helpful for that piece of land and I kind of see Facebook like that you throw a couple of seeds out things grow some of the things are really useful some of them are caught from neutral and you get a lot of bad weeds quote unquote and I'm not talking about people I'm talking about ideas right it's not suggesting that any person is a weed but more the ideas like for example stoicism is a little s it's about being cold and and hard and resilient in a very unusual way. And there's no we in, in the virtues, which is Sharon's been pointing out in ways that I, you know, are different the way I would structure the argument, but she's right. We need to have the we aspect of the virtues. I would perhaps say maybe not we virtues, but certainly the we, the core of the we needs to be in the virtues. And I think that's what a garden does. You put seeds in, but you're very careful about which seeds, you know, how many seeds you put in, and how much competition you have it's you know you've got a healthy competition because you're all trying to get you know to the light to to knowledge but at some point you say hang on there's a certain way we need to grow if we're going to grow together the other aspect is the mystical aspect of a garden and i'm not saying that one needs to be particularly religious but one does walk in a garden you know god walks in the garden of Eden God could have walked chosen to walk anywhere but walks there and if you don't want to use God then you can say but when I'm having a moment and I want to lose myself today what did I do I went to the sea right I'd go you know you'd ponder you'd potter around and I thought this was great this is an opportunity to do something like that I also saw something like for example the College of Stoic Philosophers who, uh, which Dirk runs, but I thought that was a very, very academic space. I kind of see that as the, the building, the store building, <laughs> if the store exists, like that's the really structured building classroom. And then we're kind of like, everybody would open the doors and, you know, we'd all go outside and we'd have a chat. And it's through the chatting that we kind of go, I've been reading, say, Epictetus's discourses and I was reading Mercedes Rufus. It's in the garden that we debate. It's in the garden that things really get into interested you know we all come out of the classroom we all come out of you know whatever however we decide to learn and then there's a space there's a space to be and it's a garden so there's no rules but there are rules so you can't say whatever you want you can't do whatever you want you can't trample on anybody but you can meander in a way that you cannot meander when you're stuck in my classroom you know my physical classroom Mm. (laughs) and I just thought this was missing in the contemporary strike movement and the last thing was that, you know, we all come from sort of different religious backgrounds. So I'll just leave it like that. But I felt that the only other organized kind of garden that I have seen, and for example, Massimo Gallucci runs with Greg Lopez in New York, is a very atheistic interpretation. And that's not the kind of garden that I wanted to tend to. I'm not saying that our garden would be better or worse. It's more like, what kind of garden do I want to tend to? And it's not one that's an atheistic, agnostic interpretation. 
Yeah. And then, of course, I was just very excited. I've I've heard about Sharon's work. I know about Sharon's work, but I wasn't able to be like, I work with Sharon. And that's something I'm really excited about because I do need a bit of, you know, goo to like, you know, make it a bit softer, the prickles. Sometimes my message gets <laughs> lost because I'm like, no, academically speaking, I have to plot my flag and it has to be this way. And, and then you think, well... Maybe Sharon and I agree just the way it's framed. So I can f- reframe it a little bit and she can you know, soften the edges. And the, and the same with you. And I think that, for example, you have the you know, marketing and the, you know, the, the face of the organization much more than I do, just the way it is. And I felt that we could all come together because a garden that's well tended is tended by many. And also to give space to other people to tend. So that was, that was that, I think that's my view of the of the garden and why I think this garden is necessary because to me it's very important it's like not only can we do a garden yeah of course we can should we my argument is yes because if we root that garden the logos then it makes sense to do that yeah yeah it, absolutely we in, in a band we would say tutti <laughs> everybody agree yeah so it's um yeah you know uh, Kai I think um what I really love about your understanding of what we're doing here is this this idea of having rules but no rules you know uh but being guided by a common vision um and having the freedom to meander i like that word and and and, you know sharon has we've we've talked a lot about wandering and allowing your mind to um uh, to poe to just sit with an idea not to say yes or no but to explore the possibilities and you know, I, both of you have been kind of following uh, along with me um, over the past few years since I kind of quit my job and everything. And one, one thing that's certainly been happening to me is that, which has naturally led to the World Garden, has been I've, I've actually started to really push the boundaries of my thinking, um, but but not necessarily in an academic writing sort of way, in in poetry and with photography and with music and all of these things that that to me are so ingrained in my nature like if if we talk about this idea from stoicism living in agreement with nature i truly feel as though i'm getting closer and closer to that every day by by paying attention to the ways in which i naturally express the truths i'm trying to get at and so you know like the, I, I just i can't wait to uh to be involved with this this project whereby we all get to basically choose how is the way that I best communicate the deepest wisdom of my heart or my experience in the world to people in a way that can help them to see something different. And so in that way, you know, we're in this walled garden where, uh, you know, as we've said, you have music and poetry and, you know, academic writing and, uh, philosophical discourse, you know, bringing all of these things together in a way that can can encourage everybody to do the same in their own lives. To tr- see, I I wrote this thing, and 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 I would like to know what you guys think of this. I wrote this thing recently. It was like the 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 sage uh, the sage does not teach people to be like the sage. The sage teaches people to be like them, you know, the 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 the, the truest them that is within them that, that maybe haven't seen yet, you know, um, and and I feel like that in a way that's what I really want to do here with the World Garden is encourage people to come in and say, you know, you don't have to be a philosopher or a poet or a musician or a, you, know, you don't have to be anything. All we want is for you to come in here and engage in this community whereby we are trying to encourage you to bring out the absolute best of yourself in the way that best comes forth from you, you know, in, in the way that most makes sense to you. And so I think that for me, a huge part of this is just helping people to get aligned with their own nature and who they are and, and how they can uniquely contribute to this project called humanity in a way that is meaningful and productive for all, you know, so that's kind of, I, that's what I really like about your kind of way of thinking about this, Kai, is like, you know, yeah, we're all very different here and perhaps we have a shared vision, but let's push the boundaries of our thinking, you know, and really try yes. to engage in these questions. Um, and my only final thought before I throw it back to you for your thoughts, Kai, is 
it is funny to think that we're basically a joke here. I know we've mentioned it's it's like, you know, a Jew, a Muslim and an ex-Mormon walk into a bar, you know, <laughs> and it's like, this is what you get, right? Um, but, this is but what you get. I, I'm just so excited because, you know, Sharon, you've watched me as I've kind of moved in the direction of, you know, now I'm studying a master of divinity and thinking theologically and, these sorts of questions are in many ways in our culture being um, uh, pushed to the side or um, or villainized or, uh, you know, the, the question of God, the, the uh, you know, even I'm constantly surprised that we do not talk about it enough at just how much the Stoics talked about God and providence and, and sacredness yeah. and yeah, all these things. And so for me, um, I think that this is a space where we can comfortably have those conversations and be willing to not know the answer, but to just explore the answer and uh, and to to have a great time doing that. So I don't know, Kai, any thoughts that you had on my large ramble there? I always have to push back on you just just because of the nuance. Yeah, so the yeah. sage, <laughs> the sage. It depends what you mean. So the sage oh, yes. does, does the sage does encourage one to be a sage in the sense that a sage means one that is who has a character that is incapable of making a moral mistake. Well, he, what you meant though. Which I know is what you meant was he doesn't he or she does not encourage them to be so if Kaya was a sage to be the sage like Kaya is the sage so yeah. I if I were a sage and I'm far from it but let's imagine just for the sake of simplicity I am a sage I should encourage you to be a sage but not say that to become the sage you have to be like me yeah and that's what you would I know that's what you were trying to say so because they have to push you back against yeah that. and see so this is why I freaking love you Kaya <laughs> you just <laughs> you know, I, like. <laughs> Because I need that, you know, and and one of the, you know, like you and I share a common um, interest now in the the writings of and and and, and lectures of Jordan Peterson, for example. One of the things that you, both you and him do for me is pull me up and say, you know, like because he does it via like because I've listened to him so much that every so often I'll say something and I'll think, no, that's not what I mean, or no, I should say it in a different way to get clearer about the words that I'm using and so you certainly have done that for me a lot Kai is just I remember sending you like this thing that I wrote to a you know try and get a grant here in Australia and your feedback that you gave back to me I wasn't paying you or anything but you just came back to me with this hardcore academic feedback and I thought man this guy really wants me to use my words carefully in order to progress and to have benefit in this world and so you know, I just thought, you know, that's one of the things that I love about you, Kai, is your, your um, commitment to telling me the truth constantly, even if it's against what I'm saying or, you know, trying to clarify something. So I don't know if Jake, um, if you, if you want to jump in, we've got Jake here who is um, uh, taking care of our project management in this whole thing. Um, uh, oh, and Sharon has to get going. Oh no. Okay. We're going to have to do a part two. Well, Perhaps why don't I wrap this up then? Um, and uh, I guess I'm going to read a couple of things here, and then um, we will. Uh, I'll share basically what our what our path is going to be for the next seven weeks. So this is what I wrote about what we're doing in the World Garden. Uh, I kind of stayed up a little bit last night, and I think the way that I'm learning to communicate best is through poetry. So this is kind of the way that it seems to me. <clears throat> So, welcome to the world garden. Here, nature and culture harmonize, and their tune is sweet, for they are brought into alignment by the universal logos. Here, we allow chaos to manifest itself creatively, as spoken by Jordan Peterson. Here, we seek balance, harmony, and wisdom. Here, we seek the depths as well as the heights. Here we plant seeds on fertile plains and we watch them grow into flourishing gardens. Here we offer in humility and courage the goods of our souls. And yet we do not seek praise nor scorn, but a watchful eye and a listening ear and a wandering mind and a heart that yearns for wisdom. So this to me, seems like what we're trying to do is to allow the goods of our soul, as Seneca would have said, to come into the world and to hope that 
there could be nothing better than if there was a watchful eye and a listening ear and somebody who truly cared to to pay attention to what it is that we're trying to figure out perhaps not specifically what the way that we're doing it but the questions we're asking the way that we're trying to approach it and then in terms of values for the world garden i was kind of thinking um I wrote this, and I think that this to me encapsulates a lot of the way that we're going to be approaching um, all of the questions that we're asking. So <clears throat> this is what I wrote. To virtue, truth, and wisdom, we are bound by sacred thread. As the universal logos guides us toward the light ahead. That's all I wrote for that part. There's a, there's a light that's pulling us forward. You know, it's, it's the kind of questions that we're asking. It's the kind of... Um, problems that we're going to try and solve um, uh, for our modern cultures. And I, I say that I'm not saying that we are going to save our cultures, but we're engaging in the process of rejuvenating and, and, and of bringing the best of what we've learned from the past into our, our modern age. And in a way, we're all kind of being led by this kind of little light that we, we believe that there's something important in what we're doing here. And so I guess I just wanted to throw it out. I'm, I'm excited to be working with you all. Um, this is going to be so much fun. Um, and I, I guess what I'll do is at the start of the episode, um, when I release it, I'll introduce all of the details. Like <laughs> here's where you go and, you know, here's the discount and everything. I can, I can do that um, at the start. I mean, but... sorry, if you, I can stay on if you want. And I was thinking we could say just a little bit. I know you don't have to go about what we can expect. You and We can say things like, you know, the forum bit, I think that has to go in part one as well. So I can do that. Sharon doesn't mind. Yeah. We can say yeah. what, what we oh. what we expect to be, uh, you know, what what, we, what can you expect from the walled garden, right? I think that yeah. needs to be somewhere. Are you I mean, happy it might for us be... to continue then, Sharon? And, and well, if you need Sharon. to go, that's fine. I do need to go. Sorry, yeah. Sharon, but, it's my fault. Uh, no, it's not your fault. Don't be silly. Uh, you guys are wonderful. Thank you for this time. There will be many more good times. Absolutely. Thank you. Can't wait. Bye Thanks, for Sharon. now. Bye for now. Bye bye. So long. So Kai, maybe we should just start quickly by saying um, to everybody who is listening. Uh, I know this is somewhat of a disjointed introduction to the uh, to the World Garden, but that's okay. Like it still represents exactly what we're doing here and the way that we're kind of doing it. Um, but over the next six weeks after this one, um, we are going to be having a series of conversations where we're going to invite um, anybody who's been a listener of the World Garden or just anyone who wants to come along to come and attend and engage in a discussion with us um, around what the World Garden is going to be and, and how we're going to approach it. And I should just let everybody know that for the next three weeks, we're going to be having a conversation with, uh, or four weeks, um, with each of us specifically. So it'll be like, okay, Simon, you know, what are you excited about contributing to the World Garden? So I'll, I'll go through everything that I'm looking to uh, contribute in the World Garden. And then we'll do that the same with Kai and, and Jake and Sharon. And um, so this will be a good opportunity. If anybody wants to come along, we'd love for you to be there to ask questions and to engage in conversation with all of us around uh, exactly the direction that we're going with this. And so, Kai, what, what else do you think is important to talk about here? Well, what, what do you get? What do I think, or we think, we've discussed this, when I say I, we've actually discussed this quite behind the scenes. What we think that you would get out of being, you know, a member, a person wandering, meandering around our garden, what do you get from, say, the wall garden, which is a, is a subscription model I mean, that you don't get from being in a Facebook group? I, I think that's key. So for me, it's, it is structured. There is structured learning. There's going to be conversations that do speak about not only stoicism, but predominantly stoicism. And say, for example, you know, things like might be stoicism and marriage. It might be stoicism and faith. It, it might be sto stoicism and poetry, right? It's not all going to be um, very highbrow. Some of it will be, I'm sure, with sharing practical workshops and yourself, like how you mm. use stoic principles to help bring out your music. Uh, if, for example, it could be about stoicism and training. So basically, because we've got so many, you know, so, so many different backgrounds, I think the wonderful thing is that there's going to be something for everybody and enough for them to stay. So I would, would love to do, and I will do a talk at some point on, say, stoicism and free speech, 
So mm. if one is concerned about what on earth does journalism have about free have to do in common with free speech, or what, why is it relevant today? So I, we're not going to do, if you are a member of the College of Stoic Philosophers, it's not going to be particularly a breakdown of very specific Stoic principles and why they, they are Stoic and why they're not, say, let's say, um, Aristotelian. It's more going to be like, okay, I have this practical challenge in life. How can I apply Stoicism to that? How can I become a better musician? How can I start poetry? How can I live the life of meaning as an artist? What do I do when I'm told I'm not allowed to say X, Y, or Z on campus? How can I be a better student? What does the Stoics, what does the Stoics say about war? What does that mean to me as a soldier? Um, what is it today? What does it mean today to be interested in Stoicism and be a, be a woman? Right. So I'm not going to be in that conversation particularly, although I'm hoping to join a little bit just to ask a few questions. But I think that's where that this this is what is directed to directed conversation. We're also going to have some debates, because I hope, because I've just spoken to Massimo Prelugi, as everybody was saying, can you guys debate on why the Stoic God is important or why the Stoic God exists even? We're going to have to iron that out, but there is going to be a space for polite debate because it's a garden, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to scream at each other, but there's, there's a space for that. Um, I myself am going to be involved in a forum, uh, so bring your questions sort of, sort of agony uncle. So I will be looking over, okay, what kind of people, what kind of questions are people asking me or what kind of information are they? For example, you know, I, you know, I would like to adopt in a child and is that a stoic thing to do? And, you know, give, giving some information about, okay, well, it depends on the context. Can you afford to look after a child? Do you already have children? Are you married <laughs> or with a partner? Uh, which country are you in? And things like that. Very specific um, answers to specific questions. It's not going to be a sort of very sort of generic answer. It's going to be like, Simon, if this is your context that you have provided me and this is your situation, here is the kind of things that I would ask you to think about. I don't know the answer, I'm not you, but this is the kind of things I think would be helpful to think about, which I think is, is missing if you look at stoicism from a uh, theological perspective. You can have a very atheistic in interpretation about why you value what you do or how you come to believing that virtue is the only good. The Stoics are very clear that we need a, a spiritual perspective on that so again i don't think there's much space in in facebook to do that there's a lot of noise and so we're going to be very careful about creating the kind of questions that we answer and the kind of noise that we let in so we want there to be harmony we're not going yeah. to be dictating to people what they can say and what they can't say but it's not going to be a free-for-all like yeah. facebook so to me <clears throat> that brings in in quality control which needs to happen and it brings in uh, people who are really interested of the, the richness of that debate and it's a circle of you know of friends as opposed to anybody who's got a, you know, an account with a social media company and I think some that's yeah. really important yeah yeah and, and you know like I think one of the reasons again that I I'm really excited to have you on board is your your dedication to um uh, to to revivifying the Stoic philosophy in our modern age, but but in a way that doesn't assume that you know the the Stoics back then were idiots because they talked about God, or, you know, like or or you know were insufficient in some way in their understanding of the world. And you know, I think that there's 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 so much there's so much good stuff to bring into into the conversation from the Stoics that can can really um, transform the way you see the world that has a theological tilt to it, you know, and so you have to start thinking in that way. Um, but, but in terms of my own, I guess, direction, I, I find myself saying, well, you know, and we're going to get into these conversations about what each of us specifically want to contribute. But, you know, I've found that in my writing and in my music um, in my poetry, there's, there's these common kind of threads that are coming along and um, it's, it's not in search of stoicism. It's in search of wisdom, you know, and, and that to me is the adventure that I'm going on at the moment. And so I, you know, I want to contribute to the world garden in a way that helps people to kind of come along on this adventure with me, whether it is through the photography, the poetry, the music, um, uh, or just writing. Um, you know, I want, I want people to be engaged in that question of, well, it's it's the same question that uh, that Jordan Peterson asks. He says, you know, like conceptualize the highest possible good for yourself, that would be good for you and your family and your culture and and the world at large. And and you know, 
you should move towards that. Just take a couple of steps towards that. And, and he asked that question because have you really got anything better to do? That is the moment that really pushed me on this path of trying to develop a, a deeper understanding of the wisdom of the past and um, and the, the, the beauty of nature and how they can come together and allow me to, to seek some sort of deeper connection with the cosmos, you might say, in this kind of cosmolo cosmological, um, cosmopolitan um, uh, worldview. And so I, I want to bring people along on that, you know, try to help people to see something different, to feel something different, to hear something different in music, to, um, to experience their lives in a way that revivifies the world again and, and perhaps you might say re-enchants the world around us um and so uh, yeah like you bring this real orthodox stoic thread to the conversation and i love that i probably am leaning more in the direction of um uh, the allowing myself to go where it is that i feel i'm being taken here and to see where that adventure takes us in terms of seeking deeper wisdom and, and that sort of thing um uh now, sorry, go on. Well, I do. I think it's also important to say because we have been very clear in the conversations behind the scenes yeah. that we are not going to turn people away just because they have an allegiance to another viewpoint. So, it is predominantly, you know, stoicism and an orthodox kind of view of that. But also, we were discussing, for example, and I saw this actually at Stoic Hall at the weekend that you mentioned Jordan Peterson, and in the chat, I was like, oh my gosh, JP has been mentioned, right? And, and it's like, well, you know, we're not going to be the biggest John Peterson fans ever because we're not going to, you know, but we are going to say what is important about his ideas. What do they mean? What are you, which ones are useful? Because not all of his ideas are useful, but not every, you know, if that's true for anybody. Mm. Um, which ones of his ideas are useful? Which ones are, you know, which ones are in line with stoicism? Which ones are helpful for us to distinguish between, say, Christian virtues or uh, Jordan Peterson's perspective on Christian virtues and the Stoic virtues, and what is important about meaning. So it very frustrates me, for example, and we've talked about this, that on Facebook you mentioned, one, one mentions Jordan Peterson and suddenly there's a whole sort of a batch of angry people. Or somebody mentions, say, let's say Marx, and say, well, he has absolutely, you know, Marx's ideas have absolutely no meaning or value. Well, that's just simply not true. Uh, or feminist ideas, they have no meaning, <laughs> no value, and stoicism is the broicism. And, and I think with the wall garden is like, okay, for, you know, what seeds have you got in your hand? Throw them in. We've got gardeners around. It's not a free fall. We'll see if they take. We'll look at them. We'll look at the impression, right? We'll see, okay, is this useful for the garden? So again, we are allowed, you know, allowed, but we are having space for debate. But it's not a it's not a cacophony of, of voices, right? And people are very clear about yeah. that as well. Like it's not like everybody gets to scream and jump, and because there would be no difference to that on Facebook. But there's yeah. There's, yeah. there's guidance, and I also want to emphasise that eventually we will we we are looking and considering it, bringing out courses and things like that that are very sort of very very basic, um, so that people are like I I like the wall garden, but where does that take me? What does it what does the stoic of mean, or what does stoicism mean? If I am a beginner strike, what do I have? I mean, I'm not the I'm not the one going to run that course. But if I'm a, if I'm a beginner strike, what is it I really want to know? If I'm not an academic, I'm not interested in, in doing that. So yeah. I, I think that's really key that there is this sort of community. There is an opportunity to be heard. It's not a, if you don't have the if you don't toe the strike line <laughs> on absolutely everything. So if you you know you have to be an atheist and strike, yeah, of course you can discuss it with me and argue maybe you can persuade me i hope i mean i hope you can persuade me on something because otherwise it means i'm very close-minded and i shouldn't be yeah, running a yeah. garden <laughs> so i'm really excited about being poked and prodded and and seeing what it means when people come together and, yeah. and build something something organic yeah. absolutely and yeah i want to second your opinion there that it's it's you know this is I know that we are bringing into the conversation these ideas of, of, of God and, you know, potentially somebody like Jordan Peterson, who is kind of controversial in the Stoic community for some reason or another, or, you know, that there's a lot of things that we're saying in this whole conversation today that people might think, uh, doesn't really make sense for me, not interested, right? But but we really, I think the central animating spirit, as I said there in that that little poem that I wrote, is kind of this quest for, you know, truth, wisdom, virtue, these kind of uh, highest of aims. Um, 
and to allow ourselves to have those conversations in a way that you know brings everybody into the conversation so that we can all learn and grow together um you know through that kind of socratic dialogue or that um that that common shared value of 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 human conversation and what the, the possibilities of what can come from that um and so yeah and uh, as I said, I think I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction before the episode uh, so that people actually know what it is that we're doing with the website and everything like that. But I think that people have now a general idea of the um, the spirit with which we're coming into this, you know, uh, it, this endeavor. Um, but I do, I do want to also just say, hey, Jake, if you want to come in here and, you know, uh, introduce yourself yeah. for everybody at home, that would be great. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, I've been listening to, uh, to the different points you've been making and a lot of things jump out at me, but I, I should probably start with some background because this will be the first time that anyone's heard my voice uh, on the air. <laughs> um, so first off, I'm just extremely grateful to be a part of this. Um, when I look at the, you know, Kai and Sharon and you, Simon, um, who have contributed so much to these different conversations, um, I'm, I'm just honored to be honest that, that I, I get to be a part of this because I do come from uh, what I would say is a fairly different background and what that is is sort of the background of, of um, your typical 30 year old guy who's trying to make it in society right um, but what I have to offer here I think you know like Simon mentioned earlier that the conversation came up between the two of us uh, because I kind of had the skill set to be assisting with a lot of things behind the scenes um, but at the same time, I, I feel like I kind of represent a person who, um, you know, can greatly benefit from the wall garden. Um, so I have been working in um, big tech for, for several years now. Um, I just turned 30 and I've kind of begun this process of exploring, you know, all of these different ideas, especially the idea of how do I live a good life, right? What truly brings me joy? Um, and I think I bring the perspective of having seen a lot of what goes on in society when we society tells us we're supposed to be doing, right? And that is, you know, go to school, go out, get a job, earn money, and earn money and buy things and make sure you like 50 Instagram posts a day and consume, you know? And I got to a point where I'm like, I wanna be contributing. I wanna be learning from others in a more sort of um, healthy space than the one that I'm currently in. Because when I was younger, I, uh, I, I was really into music. I wrote songs, I, I learned the guitar. Um, I was in a, a couple different music groups um, I, I wrote poetry and all that. And then it was sort of when I got into my 20s that, you know, adulthood happened. And I, I was kind of, I kind of had, you know, certain pressures placed upon me about, well, now it's time to, you know, get a real job and start earning money and, and, and start contributing to society in that way. And that's not to say that um, that's a bad thing, you know, that anyone who's working in any career is, 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 uh, you know, they're providing for themselves. And that's, that's something that is excellent. Um, but I did reach the point that I asked myself, is this it, you know, is this bringing me joy? Um, because rather than um, exploring music and art and, and philosophy and, and reading, you know, books with big ideas, like I used to, I found that by the time I turned 30, it was work, 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 go home, social media, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Netflix, go to bed, rinse and repeat. And I, I just kind of hit the point that when Simon brought this up and the, the whole concept of the wall garden, I was just like, yes, I want to be a part of this. Um, I said, you know, I'll, I'll be the copy delivery boy. If you need me to be, I'll do whatever you want in this, <laughs> in this uh, organization to help out because I, I truly feel like society needs to explore these questions right now, right? Um, of what, what truly matters to people. Um, I recently read a book. Um, I can't remember which one it was because I'm, I'm always in the middle of like four books now. But um, 
sort of making the point of, you know, if you ask a person what's most important to you in your life and what, what brings you joy, um, normally you hear the answers that, you know, when my family brings me joy, um, you know, my kids bring me the most joy, like they're the most important to me, et cetera, et cetera. And the book kind of challenged that. And they said, does your behavior support that, that that's truly the most important thing to you? Um, because are you prioritizing the cultivation of those things or are you prior prioritizing the cultivation of earning more money or earning more status or earning more Facebook likes, right? And I think uh, we're, we're at a kind of a pivotal moment for humanity where technology has advanced so rapidly that none of us really know what we're doing, you know, um, with this new technology. And it can be harnessed in, in, in really, really bad ways. And it can also be harnessed in really, really good ways. And I think that's what we're trying to do here is create an environment and a, a sort of a, an ecosystem where people can come together and feel that sense of community and have conversations and healthy debates about bigger things than just the day-to-day -day grind, you know, and working, working in a company, um, you know, in sort of a management position, I've talked to so many people who just feel like they don't have a purpose in life, you know, they ask themselves, what is the point of all this? I wake up every morning, I work so that I can pay rent and then I do it again the next day. And to me, um, getting back into exploring, you know, art and music and um, reading and all of those things that, that brought me so much joy in the past, exploring big ideas and contributing to big conversations um, has allowed me to, um, Sharon said this early on in the podcast, and it really, it really stuck out to me, um, regain that sense of wonder for life. You know, life is not just to be slogged through. Life should be a beautiful, wonderful, sometimes painful, but overall, you know, joyful experience. How do we achieve that? And what are the ideas that we have in terms of uh, making that happen? And so I feel like I sort of represent um, a person who's on this journey, right? Um, I, I don't come from the, the wealth of knowledge that the other contributors do, but I come from the, uh, you know, ex experience in the trenches of what it's like when we don't um, have a walled garden to, to kind of take refuge in and we're just kind of thrown into the the storms of, of society and, and all the chaos that's happening around us, you know? So yeah, that was a bit long winded, but uh, just really, really excited to be a part of it. No, Jake, that that's uh, everything that you said was really meaningful, man. And, and, and I, 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 uh, <clears throat> I think you did a great job of expressing exactly what it is that we're trying to do here, just trying to find out, you know, what is most important in life and how can we move closer to that? Um, and and, and, you know, for, for everybody who's listening as well, it's like, um, you know, uh, one of the reasons I brought Jake on is because he's an absolute powerhouse at what he does. You know, he's, he's, he's quite brilliant and he's going to be in many ways, a oh, the, the warrior behind us pushing, you know, pushing us in the right direction and making sure that everything's running on time and making sure that everybody's, you know, getting what they need out of this, out of this project. But he's also a, a wonderful, you know, writer and, uh, you know, musician. And it, so I'm encouraging him as well to, you know, let the goods of his soul come out in, in the world garden as well. You know, Jake, you, whenever you want to contribute in, in whatever way you uh, can or want to, uh, we, we want to hear that as well. And, and, and that brings me to just quickly a, an important point here, which is that one of the things that we want out of this world garden is to encourage participation in everybody who's in there. So, um, you know, sharing the best wisdom that you have to offer the, the group, uh, you know, sharing the best insights that have come to you from your own life and your own experience. How can we all learn from each other here um, and, and in a way grow together? It's, it's quite an exciting uh, prospect. So I don't know, Kai, Jake, do we have anything else that we really need to add here? I mean, I'm going to do an introduction at the start of this where I take people through um, where they can go, you know, what deals we're offering for the first hundred members and all that sort of stuff. Um, but other than to say, please come and join us over the next seven weeks and we'll include notes in the show notes for where you can do that. Is there anything else that we need to add? Just, yeah, one last thing. So I think Jake certainly is, is one kind of, you know, sort of one kind of person that would definitely benefit from the more yeah. for all the reasons that he said. I think Sharon brings in a, a different flavor and i think particularly women but not only again women that could really you know really say you know what does stoicism do for me 
Yeah. Well, what could it do for me as a framework? How can I walk in the walk, you know, in the world as a woman, as a stoic? Because there are places that say that's not possible or not probable. So I, I think that that's key. And I think that um, what the our people that we're going to invite and I'm going to be more involved in the podcast with you is like, you've been, if you've been into stoicism for a long time, uh, I think, again, this sort of, we're going to bring in nuances and look at it in a slightly different way and say modern stoicism does. Because again, we don't want treading on people's on toes. And I want to just say like, modern stoicism, does a very very good job of introducing stoicism in a certain flavor and we're just going for okay what's a different expression of that and doesn't mean that again that ours is better or worse or or vice versa just like okay if modern stoicism focuses on a certain interpretation what what do we bring perhaps that's something you'd also like to explore so i think it's, it's key if you say well yeah. i'm not in my 30s and i'm not <laughs> in the in the tech world so what does it what does it mean to me well if you're an artist for example i think it's clear that you're going to get support in your in your in your journey as an artist i think mm. if you are a writer as opposed to say a painter you'd also get help in your journey um i think the only caveat i would say is that when we say like please bring in your contribution i don't mean <laughs> quote mine things i don't mean copy and paste a sentence really like okay if this sentence is important why did it touch you in what way did it touch you in what way did it make you know you see uh, mm. a truth right because if people think oh, I'll, I'll just quote you know copy and paste uh, you know meditations that's not what we mean it's really about being sincere and building community and community is not built by simply copying and pasting the more you put in the more you get out so I think that's also something that I just would add. The only thing I would add, I think, is everything I have to say, at least today. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have I'll, to say, I sorry, Jack, go on. Yeah, if I could just add one thought to that. Um, so what, one of the reasons that Simon brought me into this is that I, I, I do that around, you know, working in tech for the purpose of uh, you know, bringing insight on, on markets and people uh, like um, Jake, you're just cutting out there a bit, which is actually kind of ironic because you're talking about being in the tech space. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I'm not, for everybody who's at home, uh, the, this whole conversation um, has been a represented representation of that chaos manifesting itself creatively right <laughs> the whole gun it's like you know there's been some direction but not a lot but you know we're talking about general ideas about what we're doing here and on top of that it's been disjointed conversation but it's been so much fun um jake are you in a better spot now can we hear you uh, let's see can you hear me better now yes yes go on yes okay i'll try to make it quick in case it happens again <laughs> i was just going to say that um you know part of my background is um in market research you know, which is understanding what people, but in a space of what do people want in terms of things to buy, right? And products. Um, and I, and I, I said to Simon, I said, I want to move that skill set into, you know, how do we identify what people are looking for spiritually or personally or emotionally or, or in any aspect of their life, you know? And so I think all of us would agree that the purpose of the walled garden isn't for people to come in and learn from um, you know, the people, just the people who started it. Um, I think anybody in any kind of lifestyle or, or way of life to come in and say, I have these questions about life. I have these problems in life. I have these ideas uh, about life. And that can kind of drive forward. You know, that's, that's what we would consider, you know, using the metaphor, planting more seeds in the garden and and exploring those ideas together so it's, it's an open space where people can come and bring their own thoughts right and then the whole community can contribute so it's it's there doesn't have something to offer you're going away again but um but yeah i think you speak to something that has been kind of dawning upon me over the past year which has been um you know as i coach people or as i hold meetups and all this sort of stuff i always find that 
I feel like I'm being coached by my clients because I'm always learning something great from them, from their experience, the way that they see the world or, you know, the, the questions that they're asking. And I think it's in that sharing, that coming together and, um, and having these common shared values where we can engage in these, you know, in these kinds of questions and these kinds of conversations, it's just going to be so much fun um, and, and fun in a useful way fun in a productive way, fun in a way that it lifts us all. So I think, um, I, I think that this is just a really good, yeah, this is a good place to, to finish it up and say, um, we hope that everybody, you know, even if they don't go and join up immediately, come and join in our conversations over the next six weeks. You know, we are looking to uh, solidify our understanding of exactly the direction we're going uh, through conversation, through dialogue, through asking these questions. And so uh, we want to see you at these meetups. Um, we will post links in the show notes to where you can go and register for that, as well as links to where you can go to the walled garden. Um, uh, but uh, other than that, I think we we best just uh, leave it at that. And thank you, Kai. And thank you, Jake, for sticking, sticking around. You've been listening to the Walled Garden Podcast. For more episodes just like these, or to join our community, go to thewalledgarden.com. See you there.